He was a wonderful kisser. His lips were soft and moist. It felt like we were one as he pulled my body to his. Every curve seemed to fit. I didn't want it to stop. She then goes on to describe in great detail what happens next. <laughs> well, it's a great read, that's for sure. Now, before I put my reputation on the line, I need to know that everything in this diary is fact, oh, not fiction. Oh, Michael, it's the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Then I think I should meet Lorelei Hills. I'm assuming that's a pseudonym. Well, it's more of an alter ego. I'm afraid that the author wishes to remain anonymous. It's not you, is it, Olivia? Michael, I'm surprised to hear that you would think that I would engage in such naughty behavior. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I lost my head there for a moment. So, look, you will help me find a publisher for it, right? Count on it. There isn't a publisher in town who wouldn't want a copy of this. I'll make some phone calls, get the ball rolling. But I think you're going to have a bit more on your hands. Oh, thanks. Keep me posted, okay? Sure. Of course. Well, Michael Masterson. I'd, I'd like to say this is a pleasant surprise, but it's not. Pleasant, I mean. Good to see you, too, Alan. So, uh, how's your magazine doing? The magazine's surviving quite well, thank yeah. you. Despite your pulling your advertising. When I told you from the very beginning, if you want my money, you've got to deal with me too, Michael. And I told you, there's only one chef in my kitchen, and that's me. Huh. So, if you don't want my money, why are you here? He's here as a favor to me, Alan. And you don't want to miss your plane. No, I don't. Good to see you, Olivia. You too. Um, I'll be in touch. Alan. Michael. You and Michael Masterson putting your heads together? Hmm. Tell me, should I be scared? No, no, I just asked him to do a profile on the Beacon's opening for his magazine. Hmm. But if you continue to twist his screws, he's not going to be very helpful to me. Well, it's just as well he left, because I need to talk with you alone. What about? You know what about. My marriage proposal. Oh, you mean the hostile takeover. That's the first time I've ever heard a marriage proposal called a hostile takeover. Mm. Especially my marriage proposal, Olivia. Well, it wasn't really a marriage proposal, was it? It was more of a proposal to be engaged, which you made sound about as romantic as a stock split. <laughs> well, you know, in some instances, a stock split can be extremely romantic. You know, Alan, that is sad. That is just very sad. Oh, please. Now, the last thing you would want me to be is gushingly sentimental. If I had dropped to my knees and swore my undying love to you, you would have thrown me out of my own home. So instead I get a proposal that would turn water to ice? Look, I, um, I enjoy you. I'm glad to hear that. I enjoy us. And I even enjoy the little games that we play. But sometimes, you know, sometimes I just want something... I... I just want some true feelings. I've given you true feelings and more. And if you haven't seen them, it's because I don't wear my feelings on my sleeve like my son, Philip. Well, okay, maybe you could learn a lesson from Philip. Oh, is that so? No, I'm just, I mean, all I'm saying is that he seems to know how to love a woman. You know, you may want to give it some thought not to use Philip to get under my skin. Okay, I'm all not. Right, I'm not trying because to... Because remember this, he is totally devoted to Beth. And I applaud him for his good taste. Oh, yes, good old Beth. You know, everyone puts her on this pedestal. I'm surprised you haven't gone after her yourself, Alan. Olivia, don't. No, I mean it. I mean it. If she is so perfect and so wonderful, why do you even bother with me? Tell me something. What happened between you two? You were once very close friends. Yeah, were. Were close friends. But then she dismissed me once my usefulness ran out. Well, that would explain you trying to humiliate her. Oh, fine, fine. I'm the bad girl. 
control. Blame it all on me. Olivia, the reason I want you in my life is because I can see beneath that tough girl exterior of yours. And I see someone very vulnerable. Someone with unfulfilled dreams. Now, you can turn on me, you can turn on your family, but I think the person you're most angry with is yourself. So what are you a shrink now, too? Olivia, no, no, I'm not a shrink. I am someone who wants to take care of you. Someone who wants to help you fulfill those dreams. You don't know me at all. Whatever you say, Olivia. But I want you to know that the clock is ticking on my marriage proposal. And it's conversations like these that make me wonder why I made it in the first place. Spencer. Didn't we have a conversation about knocking? Uh, it's my fault. I need to see Philip. Uh, he's not here. So I thought I'd wait in the study. No, please, by all means. Thank you, Thomas. Bill, um, help yourself to a drink, and if you don't mind, make me one while you're at it. Sure. So you're here to see Philip? Yes, yes, I am. Anything I can do to help? <laughs> I doubt it. Mm, thanks. This is about Beth, isn't it? She's not here. She's in Texas. I know. Mm. Well, if you know, then why do you need to see Philip? Well, that's between Philip and me. That's what you think. <laughs> I think you want to know where Beth is in Texas. Do you really think Philip is going to tell you? Why wouldn't he? I mean, if Beth went to explore her past as Lorelei, I think I can help her with what's important and what's not. I think you're right, Bill. I think you should get on a plane and go to Texas right now. Wait a minute. You want me to go to Texas and find Beth? Now, why would you want that? Oh, let me guess. Because you have her best interest at heart. Does it really matter why I think you should go, Bill? You obviously want to go, so go. Follow your instincts. All right, not so fast. Let's think about this. See, you're the one that arranged it so I'd find out that Beth was Lorelai. And you did it in a way that really embarrassed her, so... So what? This isn't about me. You're right. You're right, it's not. But you know what? I, I, I don't even know where I'd begin to look. Well, I'm afraid I really can help you with that. Hmm. You're gonna have to ask Philip. Or, I remember hearing Beth once say that when she was Lorelei, she used to hang out at this bar called the Palomino. Ring a bell? Maybe. Hmm. Well, I better go. Okay. Have fun!